Hi everyone, welcome back to Microsoft Build Online uh, Live. Uh, my name is Amy Boyd, and today I'm joined by uh, Lewis and Elad, who are from our cognitive search team. We're going to be talking about mining our data for gold, which sounds very exciting. So thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank it's you a, for having us. It's <laughs> a pleasure to be here. So. You know, we're talking about mining data for gold, and uh, the product that I, we want to talk to you a little bit about is Azure Search. We have a new capability that we uh, announce uh, generally available now that is called Cognitive Search within Azure Search. And uh, just so that we have a reference uh, for, uh, for the discussion and for the questions, I want to start with a little bit of a diagram, if you don't mind projecting uh, the, the diagram on the screen. Uh, yeah. Azure Search allows us to, in a sense, extract information from different data sources. Uh, sometimes you have unstructured data, like files, like PDFs, TIFFs, and so forth. Uh, or you may have a structured database, like an Azure SQL database. And what we want to do is uh, ingest that information. Uh, but in the cases where you have uh, unstructured information, like files, we want to be able to crack those documents open, extract images from them, extract text and then be able to run machine learning algorithms uh, that we call cognitive skills. Uh, this is this enrichment pipeline in the middle. Uh, we have a ton of built-in skills that you can uh, run your documents through. Maybe you want to find printed text in images, or handwritten text, or maybe extract different types of entities, such as organizations, locations, and places uh, from, those ent uh, from, from the text yeah. uh, in order to get structure. And now that you have a, a structured uh, information, now that you have this tree of information, then you can fit it into a searchable index. Nice. And we have a new, a new capability okay. uh, that is now in public preview that we call the Knowledge Store. The Knowledge Store, And right. this Knowledge Store allows us to project this tree of information that we extracted into uh, tabular uh, shapes or into object shapes uh, so that you can actually do other things beyond search such as uh, maybe you want to do analytics on Power BI or train your own machine learning models. Uh, so we're very excited about that capability as well. Nice. And Elad has a super cool demo to show us on, on, this, on this area. OK, great stuff. Whilst we're just switching over to the demo, if you do have any questions in the audience or online, please go to aka.ms Microsoft Build Live, and you can ask those questions there. And we'll get them up here, and we can ask Elad and Lewis whatever we want to know. So please do send them in. OK, should we take a look at the demo then? Yes, please do. So what I've done is uh, I've tried to do knowledge mining or cognitive search on, uh, on build. So I've taken all the session information, speakers, decks, abstracts, uh, and I've run cognitive search on it. And to make this a bit more interesting, I've taken all the speaker information and I uh, uh, enriched it using the Microsoft Graph. So I extracted all the speakers, office location, job titles, uh, profile photo. Okay. And then I've taken the profile photo and I used Face API to actually enrich that even further and create sort of like a complex type that has all the information about a speaker face. Nice. So if I go in uh, and search, if you can show my, my screen again, I'll go in and search for a few things. So I have a search index here that is powering, uh, that is powering uh, the, the build sessions data. Uh, so if I go and search for my name, for example, I'll find all the sessions that build that I'm, I'm in it. And you can see this is actually our session as, uh, as we go through uh, right now. But that's actually uh, pretty boring. I can actually run a, bunch, a bit of uh, more complex queries. For example, show me all the sessions that have speakers where the profile information, face, bold value is more than uh, 0.5. So they're like more than 50% bold. Uh, yet they have more than 50% sideburns. And uh, I don't know, have uh, glasses, uh, reading glasses. So you're going to run this kind of query on the same database. And there's one result. I can go and, uh, and look all the way back. He's a senior program management in his 40s. Um, his name is Jeremy Kelly. Uh, ah. So apparently, some uh, gentleman uh, uh, answers all the queries that I put in this crazy, crazy query. OK, and a lot, but you told me that you took that information and, and actually dumped it into the knowledge store to do some analytics on it. Yes, so I have actually went and did exactly that, if you can show my screen again. And I've taken all this thing and, uh, and projected it into uh, our knowledge store, into a set of tables. And from there, I put a Power BI dashboard on top of this. Oh, so now, for example, we can answer the, the question of uh, uh, what, the, what does Jeremy Kelly look like? So I can uh, uh, use the Power BI built-in queries. And this is Jeremy Kelly that we talked about earlier yeah, on. Bold, has so you can see he has all the <laughs> required characteristics. I can do a bunch of other uh, uh, fun stuff. So I can go and uh, run a, uh, 
a Power BI query on, uh, I don't know, uh, show me uh, all the uh, bold speakers uh, by the age. Uh, let's use uh, binary baskets where bold uh, is more than uh, whatever, 0 0.5. 0 .5. And what, I, what I see here is a, is a graph that shows all the uh, speakers based on uh, buckets of age, 30, 35, 40, that are more than 50% bold. You can go and explore them and see all the, all the photos. Uh, let's show you the, the oldest and the boldest, so you see like Satya and, and whatever. Now, uh, you would expect to see Scott Guthrie here uh, being an old and bold uh, gentleman, <laughs> but apparently that, that doesn't work. So let's figure out what's going on. Like, why isn't Scott, uh, why isn't Scott here? So if I go and search for Scott Guthrie here, uh, let's see his profile photo. So Scott uploaded a profile photo from like 25, 30 years ago uh, where he has a full headset of hair, hence he missed our bold, uh, our bold qualifier. So uh, uh, that basically the knowledge store into a Power BI projection using the same cognitive search flow that Louis was talking about. Nice. And I really, I really like this demo because it shows how now that we have structure, right? Uh, now we can do interesting things, both on, on the search side yeah. as well as on the analytics side. Ah, because I really like the fact that you've been able to access that from Power BI, right? Whereas previously it was in Azure Search yes. and you got all of that like sort of, you know, amazing information. But now, so so the the projections or the knowledge store, that's that's in a storage account, is it? That's kind of like a, that, that's built, that's refreshed, and then you can access that from many different places. Have I understood that yes, right? Yes, absolutely. That is goes into your storage account and then you can choose how do you want to use it through blob APIs or through Azure tables, and then you can slap a Power BI dashboard on top of it or anything that you want to do. No. And, and by the way, we had several sessions at Build. Yep. There was one that was just focused on the knowledge store. So if you uh -huh. are interested, I recommend you take a look at that one as well. OK, right, because yeah. they'll all be available online. So definitely go and take a look at all those different sessions that you guys mm -hmm. have been in. That's really cool. And so when um, we're creating a knowledge store, we go, uh, sorry, when we're creating a cognitive search project, we go via Azure Search, it's not a separate thing, right? It's, it's all together. You then build that out. You, what, you call it cracking into the documents. <laughs> I like that. That's we, a cool we, phrase. We, we crack the documents open. And you are right. Cognitive Search is, is really the name of a feature of our right. product. And our product is Azure Search. That is okay. correct. I yeah, see. That's a very good question. We don't want you to be confused on that <laughs> terminology. Great stuff. And so um, if you were to recommend people getting started, people might not have used this before, where do you recommend they go first? Yeah, so um, I would recommend you take a look at our documentation. We have a, a set of quick starts and tutorials. Uh, for instance, there is a quick start. Even if you don't uh, want to write a single line of code, you can uh, use the portal and uh, kind of go through a workflow like a wizard, right. where you uh, essentially tell the system what you want to do, where your data is that you want to index, what enrichments you want to apply to your information as well as what are the attributes of that search index. Without creating a single line of code, you can create a searchable index. Now, of course, with the, you know, with the APIs, you have a little bit more flexibility. And we have uh, tutorials on how to do that with REST APIs, with .NET, and so forth. Fantastic. OK. And um, if we were going to kind of give some examples of where you've seen search used well, can you, can you tell me a little bit about them? Yeah. So we've seen Azure Search and Cognitive Search used in a bunch of industries. Uh, we have customers in uh, oil and gas using this to mine well information and historic seismic data. We've seen healthcare customers using this to mine uh, clinical trials and doctor notes and whatever. We've seen basically any enterprise, any industry that has a bunch of data, insurance, uh, legal, finance, Oil and uh, gas, uh, contracts, oil, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Bring it in. India. Yeah. Wherever you've got lots of different structured, semi-structured, unstructured. Yes. You're literally like cracking into dark data, people like to call it, don't PDFs, they? PDFs, Excel, Word documents, photos, any, of the, any and all of the above, feed into a blob or whatever and let Cognitive Search mine this for information. Fantastic. We actually have a question from the audience. So uh, Marcin has asked us, can I use Azure Search and Knowledge Store on my OneDrive for Business account data files? Is that, is that possible? So, so what you will have to do there is create some kind of logic app Ah. that connects to your OneDrive and then connect it into one of the Azure data sources that we support. Right. Such as, in this case, probably Blob Storage will be a good 